Hello everyone, welcome back to another Svelte Sirens talk. We've got a February talk. I feel like it's been a long time since I've been here. I think it was December and maybe even right after I got laid off when I did one of these. So we took January off. I've gotten a new job. I'm back to streaming again. And today we've got a wonderful guest that I'm very familiar with because we host a podcast together called the Coding Cat Dev Podcast. So today we've got <laughs> I can hear myself coming back through. Uh, oh, you've got YouTube. I will check all my browser tabs. <laughs> hey, Enrico. Uh, oh, you got YouTube. I will check all my browser tabs. <laughs> it's got to be one of those. Hey, Where is it? I think it's on your side because when you muted, it went away. Oh, my gosh. It is. I apparently had a had it open. It was on my side. Apologies, everyone, for that. Um, anyways, back to what I was saying. We have a wonderful guest with us, Alex Patterson from Athrite today to show us how to use Athrite and Svelte. Alex, you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Sure. I'm a senior developer advocate at Athrite.io. Um, today, I'm pretty excited to, to join Brittany and Svelte Sirens because Athrite's been doing a ton of work on, on Svelte uh, or using Svelte, actually. So, our new consoles build on Svelte. We're going to show off a little to do Svelte uh, demo today. Um, I'm just really pumped about it. So, yeah, me too. I'm really excited. And all the things that Athrite has done with Svelte, and I think Svelte Kit too, right? The new yep. stuff is built in Svelte Kit, which yep, is absolutely. Really cool. So, I think, I think what we're going to do in the to do is just Svelte. But uh, yeah, as we're going through the console, um, I think I could show you even the repo for our. Uh, console, which is built in SvelteKit. So we can check out both. Cool. Awesome. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'll go ahead and share my screen and we can show this off. So what are we going to be working on today? This is the AppRite Cloud that is new, right? It's in beta. So it's in private beta. You're one of the lucky few that uh, maybe maybe a thousand ish people, but um, we're we're gradually letting people into our private beta just so we make sure we like scale it correctly and nothing goes terribly wrong. So I knew we were going to do this podcast and wanted to get you into the cloud and and get things checked out. Now, with that said. There's nothing that's different in our cloud version than a hosted version. So we always try to keep those versions the same. We did just do a, a minor, major minor patch. Yeah, minor uh, release uh, out the other day. So I think our cloud version is actually like a minor behind, but nothing too significant, just some bugs and things that were, were fixed up. So um, awesome. I'd love to show you like if anyone you know, has ideas about the console and wants to do something, if you go to github.com slash app, right? There's uh, our repos are out here. And one of them, if you click on the repos tab, I believe right there, the third one is console. So this is actually, we try to be as open source as absolutely possible. So this is the console that Brittany and I are looking at. So I, I believe if you go to packages, you will see SvelteKit is is in there. In package.json? Package.json, yeah. SvelteKit. There you go. Right so that's, that's the current version that we're running on our console that gets built out. So the way that you actually um, install AppRite, typically there's, there's a lot of different ways, but the easiest way is through a Docker image. So that Docker image actually um, bundles up this console with it. Um, and that's what's kind of the UI to the whole thing. And this is all brand new and uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, within the last, ooh, when did we release? Three months ago, something like that? Yeah, and I think a couple months ago we were going to do this stream and I was looking at it and I gave you a bunch of crap because I'm like, I'm not putting Docker on my machine. And then I got this job and I had to install Docker anyway. <laughs> and yeah. so I'm learning a little bit of Docker. I, but I think it's like you and I are, tend to be more front end devs. And yeah. because of that, I think we're always like, ah, oh, I don't want Docker. I don't want databases on my machine. I know, machine like, what is that? Docker? I don't even understand. <laughs> But it, it is like, it's really cool because um, it makes it super easy for everyone to be able to run it on any machine you're on. And the, yeah. the great part too is we have products like Gitpod and um, like DigitalOcean, you can one click, boom, you're up and running with it. So it, it's really great for portability. Um, so 
for those who haven't heard of Evaporate before, the complete backend side of it is almost all written in PHP. Um, so all of our APIs and like the security layer and all of those pieces and parts are are built on PHP. This front end is actually tapping into all of the the normal APIs you would like. You could you could actually write your entire front end console if you want. We're just trying to you know kind of take that work away from you. So. <laughs> It's awesome. And I think it runs on MariaDB. Yeah. So so there's a lot of, uh, not a lot, but there's some open source things that we use as well. So MariaDB, uh, writing a database would be incredibly difficult. Who knows? Maybe one day we will, but I doubt it. Um, so currently we support MariaDB out of the box. Um, there's a lot of ways to change different environment parameters, but we try to set up uh, the instances like with what we expect like a typical project would start with. Um, so you get MariaDB out of the box, you get real-time um, sync out of the box, authentication, um, and we'll go through a lot of this. So authentication, storage, uh, functions for like cloud functions, the cool part about those is that um, I feel like maybe maybe we should open the docs because I'm going to miss some of this stuff. But um, in the docs, typically, like you and I, we write a lot of stuff in Node.js. But if you're like a Rust fan or a Dino fan or one of those, you can actually extend all of those cloud functions to different uh, to different runtimes, the wrong word, languages. OK, um, cool. That's so awesome. Yeah, if you click on SDKs on the far left under getting started, it's the last one there. If you scroll down, there's our set of client SDKs. So we have a very popular um, web SDK and Flutter SDK. Those are our main two um, that like people use a lot. Um, there's people using our Apple and Android as well. They're just not quite as popular as the other two, but huge in the Flutter community. Okay. Uh, if you scroll through the server SDKs, so wow. all of these are supported out of the box. Typically, I like I said, we usually write everything in Node.js. Um, yeah. People love writing in Dino, though. I've seen a lot of cool, um, cool PHP and Ruby stuff that's getting written. I think uh, I, so. I'm not a Flutter expert, but I believe Flutter's written in Dart, and a lot of people that are writing Flutter actually write their cloud functions in Dart as well. So a lot of fun stuff on that side. Very cool. All right. So what are we going to be working on today? Do we want yeah. to share? So let's Do let's something? jump into after all that, you know, fun background stuff. <laughs> let's up, yeah. let's dive in. Um, I don't know if you have pulled down yet or not, but for sake if people want to follow along or anything like that, if you go to GitHub, um, there's a repository called let's see if we can get back there. Um, demo. Demo to do Svelte. Now, now I'm second guessing myself. I think if you just type Svelte, it'll result? come up. That's the one. Yep. Perfect. So demo dash to do dash with dash Svelte. Do we want? I, I linked that for everyone in the chat, but do we want to give everyone kind of a heads up about the README? I know we've yeah, so we should that. we should address that. So I think the last PR we updated so that it will work against. Um, our 10.1 SDK and above, uh, or our 10 and above, I should say. I think it's on 10.1. The README did not get updated. So it's actually on our older version of AppRate. So it, it's slightly confusing. I, I was trying to get a PR out and done before this talk, but it didn't quite happen this week. That's OK. We're going to go through all of this right now. Is it OK to like talk about Astra on this stream? Is that all right? That is fine. They okay. support Svelte. So <laughs> we actually had Fred on and did a Sirens talk with Fred. And um, we had Willow has been working with Astro community a lot. So she's been doing some things there. Nice. I was actually um, pleasantly surprised how well um, all of the Svelte stuff works in Astro. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It is. So it's a really interesting project. I'm interested in diving into it more. So if you do happen to start following this readme, uh, just know it should change in the future, but there's a couple things. Um, when we upgraded, um, gosh, this has been a, a few months ago now, um, you used to only be able to specify one database for your project. Now we offer uh, multiple different projects, multiple applications, multiple databases, multiple collections. So it, it just kind of keeps going and going and going. And so yeah. that's probably one of the biggest changes that our SDK has undertook in a long time. 
um, to allow for multiple databases. So you actually have to provide a database ID along with other things um, in there. So that's that's probably the biggest takeaway from the, the README. Our console pictures are also off because our console was updated. Yeah, so, so the screenshots and everything are a little outdated. So yeah. I just ran the git clone command so I could get that locally. I'm going to go ahead and CD into that. And I called it so sirens, or no, I called it sirens. Siren stream app rights to do. OK, I'm going to open that up. And the first thing it tells us to do after that is to run this copy command so we can get this environment dot example over. So I'm going to run that and tell me if I should stop doing anything. I think you're doing good so far. Luckily, we, we checked this out the other day. <laughs> yeah. And so okay. we have our new dot env file and it is already set up and everything. So it's not checked into Git. All of that is working. So now we can run, I guess I will use NPM, but I love to use PMPM usually. <laughs> use NPM I and then NPM run dev to get this running. But it's not gonna run, right? Because we have some work to do. Yep, we've got a little bit of work to do. Um, so basically at this point, you have a repository that has, yeah, kind of like some front end stuff set up to it. And I'm happy that the screen actually comes up. So that's good. Yeah. Um, I still don't know what the two two do is, but uh, you know, do. It's, really pretty, <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Um, so if you actually start, uh, what we'll do is we'll start heading down the road of setting up the project. So um, in the future, uh, a couple months from now, we'll we'll drop a, a hot take, hot release, whatever you want to call it. AppRite will be going fully public. <laughs> Um, cloud. The cloud will be fully open to the public, not in private beta anymore. Awesome. Um, so at, at this point in the readme, there's a couple other ways to set it up. I don't know if that Heroku one works anymore just because of all the stuff that's going on uh, with yeah. Heroku, but um, the other hosting pieces to this, I believe these are all going to host the actual like front end project, not necessarily yeah. the uh, app rate instance. So um, up in the very top, there's a call out of the readme. There's a call out that says, go to our installation steps. I would just head there in our docs um, and that will that should cover everything. So uh, if you're looking for the simplest way to follow along again uh, with what Brittany's doing, I would probably suggest DigitalOcean. They have a lot of free credits out there. It costs about five bucks uh, a month in credits um, to run an AppRite instance per month. So you can just set that up um, following the instructions with all of that said, we're going to dive into the, the cloud version that Brittany has up and going for that. And if we have enough time at the end to like, I can deploy my end to like Netlify or something pretty yeah. fast and easy. But um, like you said, I'm on the cloud version. So AppRite is hosting that instance of AppRite in the cloud yep. for me. We could even show how to set it up on DigitalOcean. It's it's pretty fast. It's like oh, two cool. grand. Okay, so. yeah, I've never done DigitalOcean. So if we have time for that, that would be great. Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, ta jump into your first tab there. I almost said toggle in. <laughs> first tab? Uh, your your first browser tab. I think we have AppRite. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a brand new project and walk through all of the steps. Okay. So we're going to create a Sirens AppRite to do project. <clears throat> So okay. you'll notice uh, Brittany is actually in a, it says personal projects. So that is her organization level. The Sirens app right to do is the project that we're in now. Um, and inside of here, you basically get a lot out of the box. So if you click on auth, you'll notice that auth is already set up and good to go. Um, this will be out of the box. If you click settings, You'll see all of the auth methods at the top there. Um, sorry, with the toggles at the very top. So okay. you get email password, anonymous, magic URL, jots, like all of that directly out of the box. I will say there's a slight caveat on some of this, um, just because when you're doing like a magic URL, you actually have to set, send out like an email for that to someone's mm -hmm. uh, yeah. inbox. You would actually have to have a SMTP provider there. So um, I don't know in the cloud version we might have that set uh, automatically, 
but if you're hosting that, just make sure to read through our SMTP um, kind of guidelines. You can use like send in blue, send grid, like all kinds of stuff okay. for that. Um, so auth is all set up. Databases, if you click that, your database, MariaDB, is already running and you're in the Docker instance. Um, I keep saying instance. I'm so bad at Docker. I don't know if that's the right word. I hope so. Um, so that is, yeah, so there's the container, but like there's little, uh, I'm not even going to go down back road because I'm going to mess it up. Um, so in the database side of things, what we're actually going to do is create a new, it says database, which is going to be the MariaDB side of things. So okay. we create that. Um, just to, to do to do works. Yep, I can't remember what's in the README, but that works just fine. And so you, now that we have a database set up, a collection is actually like a table in a database. So okay. go ahead and create a collection. And so this is like you can call it like to do's collection. You can call it what whatever you kind of. That feel is like fine with me. Naming is the worst. Yes, I agree. Somebody <laughs> told me it's like eighty percent of a developer's job. Yes. And I think the readme was telling us we need to set up some environment variables with all of these. So yeah, I think I think now that we have all of those parts and pieces, we can fill out our uh, environment variables. Okay. And actually, so. let's go let's go one step further before we head down that road, just yeah. in case people are following along. Um, let's go ahead and do our attributes inside of this collection. So if, <laughs> again, if you keep that kind of table concept going. An attribute's almost like a column in a table. Um, okay. We do have MongoDB and a couple other databases that we're gonna support very soon. Um, so that will essentially be the same, except you're not using columns at that point. Yes, and when we went through this the other day, we noticed that these screenshots were outdated. And so you're gonna notice a little bit of difference here, but when we go to create these, um, it's an attribute type of string. And then the size was 255, and there's no default value. Yeah, um, the very one. top, you'll need to name that attribute. Oh, yeah, and it's it? named content. Yeah, there you go. And it's required, and Perfect. that's it, right? Yes. Yeah. And then I think there's at least one more for the to-do example. Yeah. I can't remember if that's Did cool. I just hit the wrong thing? Cancel. So it took me um, off of attributes. So now I'll create another attribute, right? So we ran into that the other day, right? So yeah. you're in, I think you're in a blank documents page and then you clicked create attribute at the bottom without toggling over. So okay. this might be fixed in, in the update that isn't on the cloud yet. So Gotcha. Okay. And then the second attribute is a Boolean is complete. It is complete. And it is a Boolean. And it is not required, not an array, and no default value. Okay. Perfect. So we have a very simple two-column table, essentially, at this point. Um, so two attributes in our collection. Um, now, if we want to go, let's go all the way back out to the beginning and just click on that overview. Um, I, I want to call it a tab. Um, so in here, what we're going to be looking for to do is create a new uh, web application to connect out to it. So the, yep, exactly. Click on that web app. Um, this can just be your Svelte Sirens if you want. You can name this basically whatever you want that is useful to remember what the application is used for. Um, sometimes I even put like development or local because this one we're gonna add the, the host name of localhost. Yep. Awesome. So uh, this can be confusing. If, if you're working out of a GitHub repo already and you're following along the steps and this pops up, this is to help people if they started actually from the AppRite console to start into it. So if you're just in this console messing around and you're like, I, I want to create an app, these are the steps to just get your basic like application going. We're going to hit the skip optional steps on the rest of this because it, it's just going to take us all the way out and we're good to go. Oh, perfect. Um, on the next, uh, so if we jump back over into the VS Code side of things, oh. yep. there should be our environment variables already set. So this maybe? 
Yeah, that, that should work. Um, so the app endpoint, if you're running on localhost, that's going to be HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash v1. We are not, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean, to, didn't mean to make you type that out. So we're not actually oh. on locals. If if you um, actually, it. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. If if you click the uh, hamburger button for the nav, oh okay, and go to um, wow, this is really throwing me off. There, I don't think it's. Let me it's make it interesting. What's, I'm, what's I'm glad we ran into that. I'll have to either bring that up with the team, or maybe it's an fixed. issue that something's missing from yeah. the. So the, in the bottom left, there's a settings button. Oh, I wonder, was it somewhere else? Yeah, I wonder if it's the very bottom, like scroll, if you can scroll in there. No. Uh, sorry, in the if you open that hammer. Oh, and this and scroll? Oh my gosh, it is. Oh, weird. What is this? Totally weird. There it oh, is. Oh, it's right there. Interesting. That's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. okay, so here is actually where your API endpoint is listed. Okay. So if you're if you're hosting this on Docker or somewhere else, you will have a, another API um, that you'll have set up. So either at a domain or an IP address or something like that. Um, yeah, your project ID is there too. So I, I do want to show you another spot to copy that project ID. Um, if you go back to the hamburger button and go to overview. So that project ID right there, you can just click and it will copy out and it'll paste the same thing. Okay. So we are going to update this in our environment variables. They're a little little backwards. So we have collection ID and database ID, which is a little confusing. I think it was just thrown in and added later. Um, if we actually go to databases now, and then we go to your to-do database, or, or that right there, yeah. And paste that. I always that. forget it's there. So if you okay. dive in, now, now you click into the collection. That's there. Perfect. Perfect. So I think that's that's all of the um, setup that we'll need from environment variables. This has us connected not only to our AppRate instance because of that endpoint at the top level and our project. That's that's realistically all you need, probably from an environment variable standpoint. You can kind of float the uh, database and collection IDs all over the place because okay. you can use multiple. So um, at this point, you're good to go. Fire up uh, Svelte. Let's shut it down and restart it just, just in case. Excuse me. Kind of like that it's using the old school 3000 port rather than the 51. Was it 5147? I think we manually changed that at some point, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so at this point, um, you'll since we have a brand new project, you'll need to sign up. Oh, someone did mention uh, it would be nice to be able to submit a schema. Is that something in... Oh, yeah, the schema to the database. So from the schema standpoint, what we typically find on most, and this is up for debate, but a lot of people, what they like to do is model out um, the database that they want. Um, so you could do this completely like via API or, or SDK or whatever. What we'll, and we'll walk through this actually at the end, but what you typically end up doing is having an appRate.json of what, the exact model is when you're done. And so that sets up all of your um, your databases, your collections, all of those different parts and pieces. And so all you have to do is do app write deploy project, app write deploy collection, and you're, mm -hmm. you're done. You don't have to do all the manual steps at that point. That okay. also works for like CI, CD type setups and things like that too. All right. So, so yeah, sign, up, sign up first. Sign up. So this this makes you a, a user in in the app right side of things, and I, I hope this works. We ran into bugs a little yes. bit. If you if you click the uh, the uh, app right instance and go back in there, I'll just show you a few different things. Um, if you go to auth, <clears throat> I've been on too many streams this week. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> I um, know. So if you go into auth, there's there's your brand new user that you just created. If you actually click that user. You should actually see act under the activity, you can see the session as well that we just uh, established. Very cool. So it kind of knows like what's going on with that user. There's there's a limit of like 10 sessions at a time. And what we mean by that is if you're actually using
using that many sessions, it, it goes and overwrites your like first session. So it doesn't like bottleneck you at all. Gotcha. So we try to keep the session numbers uh, down. <clears throat> um, so yeah, now if you dive back in this felt app. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how much you want to look around or we could try it first and go from there. <clears throat> Let's see. So we hit enter, nothing happened. Um, yeah, so type, what you, did you put that emoji I, in or? No, I just put to do. That's the placeholder text oh, on that. Nothing happened. Oh, that, no, and nothing that's happened. Not good. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's check the console out. Maybe there's an error going on somewhere. Nothing on the server and uncaught in promise. Current users not ah, to perform the requested action. This is good. I like this. So yeah. we actually missed a step. Um, okay. So this is this is this is actually good for people like trying this stuff out. Yeah. So if we go back into our app rate console, and we go to our database, and go into to do, the to do database. Yep. And click on settings. You'll actually notice uh, as we scroll down here, keep going a little bit further. Or sorry, not in the database, in the collection. So go oh, back okay. out to collections, go into the collection. There we go, go into settings. Um, so at the collection level, we forgot to set any permissions up. So this is actually a good thing. Like it, it blocked yeah. us from being able to do anything. So we're going to add a new role in here. There was no feedback though. Maybe we can like progressively enhance this. Yeah, so what what was the actual error? It was like a 401. It says guest Yeah, there only? was a 401 uncaught app right exception. So yeah, in the console, is, but the no current user is not authorized to perform the requested action, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's that's gonna be a tough one. Um but we'll keep working on app right exceptions. We have this. Oh, no, I just mean in the to do app itself, like how oh, does the user yeah. facing this? We have to talk about our to do app code. Uh, <laughs> it needs some updating. Let's just say that. So the, the try catches in there are hiding too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if we, if we actually update our permissions in here, um, what we're going to do is all users. So anyone that created that user like you did and is logged in are going to be able to create a to-do. Um, Just create can, or we want? So it, it depends on how you want your application to work at this point. So um, let's talk about two, two different parts in the collection. So if you want to be able to only like update and edit things that you're working on, what you can actually do, there's a toggle right below there that says update document security. And what that does, if you've ever worked with um, like, an S3 bucket, let's say, or, or something like that, and you're you're adding something in, that individual user can set up um, document level security. So even though it's a create, I could say my team can only access this document. So we don't have to do it on the whole collection. To keep things easy for us in this demo, we can, we can mark all these and okay. uh, keep moving along. But Typically in an application where you're like sharing a, a bucket like this, like let's say a blog, I would want to give someone like on dev two the ability to create, but I wouldn't want to give every user the ability to edit, update, delete. I would want to only allow that user to. That's where you would check users create only and then below that document level security. Gotcha. Cool. Um, so with that... Uh, I think we're okay. Let's let's try out the to do you again. Think we need to restart goes. the server. Shouldn't need to. Nope. That worked. There it is. There's your first to do. Awesome. And that's we can dive into the Svelte code and, and look at whatever you want or wherever you want to take it next, Britt. I'm game. Yeah. Um. Let's. I guess talk about what's going on here. So let's see. We've got the app dot spelt that kind of has the whole app put in here. It's got a router. The alert. This is using the spelt spa router. I've never used this before. Yeah, I'm not as familiar with that either since we've been using spelt kit so much. Push to slash and to do's. We've got. I'm imagining this is what is being used for the input. Here we go. I should 
should probably bring this up on my side too. On submit, if we look at that submit, it's doing this add to do function. What if we added something with like an error handler in here? I so, think if you, if you go to like that add to do and click on like go through to it, the, the uh, sorry, the Svelte store that's set up there. Yep. There's a to do store for that add to do. My guess is that because, yeah, if you go down where it says add to do, so where it says SDK database create document. Um, so you'll notice in there, we, we can actually do some typing. So we gave our to do a type in there. To do. Yep. And then the, the users, so they're actually setting up um, uh, so that, you remember that collection level? that we talked about, they're actually mm -hmm. using the collection level uh, code in here, which I didn't realize. Um, so let's just talk about a few things here. The server.database, server.collection, those are both coming from our environment variables. Um, and then the id.unique is just telling the database that go ahead and create an ID for us. Uh, we're not going to send one in. The next part is our actual like to do from the screen. So the content and is complete parts of that. The next part though is, is a little more interesting. So where it says permission dot read update delete, those are the permission types allowed for this specific user. So you'll notice the top line of add to do actually grabs our current user's ID. So the account mm -hmm. ID and passes that in. So it's saying only allow read update and delete for Brittany. So they're actually doing yeah. that kind of dev two like example where you can only update your own stuff. Awesome. The, the part where the like try catch piece comes in is a little interesting because I'm not used to the stores. So I think return update. What is update? If you click on update, is that a function that we have somewhere? Coming from the, that's from the store. So that's a method on the Svelte store. Gotcha. Um, I feel like that is going to hide the error no matter what then. Yeah, that's what we ran into when we were looking at this the other day. It was in a try catch block and it was updating the store and we were missing like the error. There was no error on our side at all because it was like hidden in the store logic. I wonder, let's try something just uh, like if you want to mess around and try them. Yeah. Um, under under that to do uh, where, where it has the whole like await SDK, blah, blah, blah. This one? Um, yeah, let's see if we can at least do right below that do console.log and just do to do. I just want to see if even that would show up. I think it will. It did work. OK, so I think if that shows up, if instead we put a try catch right at that level, which is probably not the way I would recommend doing this, but we can try it out. Um, we can actually to do. Yeah. Yeah, around that to do one. And then we want a catch here. And we'll do, I don't want you, uh, Copilot error. Oh, you're still using Copilot. Nice. I haven't used it in a while. I probably should. It'll probably make me uh, code a lot faster. Okay, so now our to-do is in the scope, though, and we need to return this inside of there, right? Yep, that should work. Okay, right. now if you go up to the, the app right console again and remove those permissions and update. Yep, okay. and now try that's Still not the user facing, but we did get an uncaught. So that's that's uh, when you tried to delete. That's in a different state. Try to add a to do. Oh, that's where we put that logic. That's why I would do it a different way. There's no submit button either. <laughs> Thanks for bothering me. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, so yeah, I think that uncut piece or the upright exception right there from your store on line 40, that actually caught the air um, that we would have normally seen. So um, instead of console logging, you could also do um, a pop-up too. So just do alert and then the air and then a user would get feedback. Again, this is not fancy or anything like that. We would probably have a toast message or modal or something come up instead. Yeah. So that's that's one way to, to do it. I'm glad that alert showed up. So that that has browser context. Something else you and I were, were doing with uh or you're sharing your whole screen. That's why. Never mind. When when I was trying to do oh, a, yeah. a demo, um, who was that with when we did the components stuff? And I was trying to show the new like modal that would work. Uh and oh. it kept popping up out of the browser content. Yeah, like, because you would just share your like browser window. Yeah. <laughs> That's all good. Uh, what do you want to do next? You want to show how to like set up an app right instance? You want to um, do you want to try uh, real time first and show like the digital ocean stuff? Sure, we can do that. Okay. We've how got like or I can minutes. show you how to install it now that you have Docker running on your machine, how to install <laughs> local. I'm still good with that. Okay. okay, let's do the hosting first and then we'll we'll talk about Docker. I don't okay. know. <laughs> Both will take around five minutes. So <laughs> Okay, cool. All right. Um, have you ever used DigitalOcean before? I have not. Okay, sweet. I think you can get some easy credits that way then. Good. So I think if you go to DigitalOcean. Okay. I don't know what it is, so I'm just gonna search it. There you go. So free two hundred dollars in credits. Wow. Let's do that. Sign up with GitHub. We'll be there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So DigitalOcean is um, I'm going to get this wrong, but it's a, a hosting provider um, for a multitude of things, and typically you're going to run on what's called a, a droplet, and those droplets are basically little VMs that run. I think you can actually buy on the. Uh, um, What's the, they always call the hardware level. I, I've been out of the architecture game too long. Um, I'm missing my, my word. They have a specific word for like raw or like hardware. So this is the part that's always like scary to me. <clears throat> yeah, no, I get that. Okay, so I have to connect to one of these. You would have to do one of one of those things. Okay, let me pull it this up. Is, this is where Heroku ran into problems for years. And that's why they, they switched that model and everybody got super mad. Um, okay. So like if I do this, it says you have to do a prepayment. Huh. Maybe that's why too. I'll, I'll pay you $5. I'll Venmo you. You don't five, have to pay five me $5. I'm just, okay. So you have to do a prepayment now to make Heroku work. Does, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So that's so the the issue that these infrastructure companies that aren't massive like AWS and, and Google and stuff like that, um, what they what they've been running into is that um, not necessarily hackers, but people that are doing bad things, bad characters on the internet. They were using all of their their infrastructure to do bad stuff, and they would sign up for all these free accounts, and they would start crushing people with them. And so they realized just saying, hey. You send us five bucks and we'll give you an account. Even if you don't ever use that and you only use the $200 in credit, that prevents yeah. so much stuff. And the, the only reason I, I'm like talking about this is the Apric Cloud, we're, we're having like thoughts around this. And I, I think for now, we're just going to have to make it public and free and see how it goes. I wonder if doing, you know, when you verify your PayPal account and it connects to your bank account and they just send like some change and then yeah. it refunds back. Why would that, would that deter enough or would, is that know. not? That, that's a fair question. I don't know if that would, I, I don't know. I really don't. And there's probably some time involved in that too, because like you would have to send that charge. Then you as Brittany would have to go out and yeah, verify you do have to wait on all of that. Yeah. So it's not immediate. Sorry. I have to do all the 2FA <laughs> Um, sorry, sorry. I, we don't even have to do this if you don't want. Uh, we oh, can do it local. It's fine. Too. I mean, I'm interested in seeing how it works because I've never used DigitalOcean, and I used to use <clears throat> Heroku, and I obviously don't anymore. So yeah, and unfortunately, like all these nice 
hosting providers and like i don't fault them for it i, I think five bucks especially at a company level like yeah, i'm sorry and, and you're not ultimately gonna pay that five dollars so that's cool. that's the tough part and it's a hard pill as well we have that uh decision all the time on coding cat stuff we're like how do we keep this free how do we keep this cheap mm -hmm. and it's like okay it's tough. set up now um what okay, so you got your credits. It looks like they're good for two months. So we should we should use the heck out of those things. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say the Twitter bots. The reason I used Heroku anyways was the Twitter bots, and they're kind of dying anyways with yeah. the whole Twitter thing. So yeah, but that's that's another great example. They were doing some some good things. Like I don't want to dis you know Twitter bots. There's some really fun ones out there, but there's a lot. I had a Kelly Clarkson <laughs> Twitter bot that just <laughs> retweeted right. Kelly Clarkson. Stuff. I forgot you had that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you actually, so if you go back to appright.io slash docs, actually, I think you have it open. This just third. one second. I just wanted to put this comment up. I don't feel comfortable yep. to have these companies with their hands in my pocket, enabling a service that can escalate out of my control. And I agree with that. And I put yep. it to where they couldn't save my PayPal information. So I like, it's a one time. So Thing. What what I actually do a lot, um, and I know this is an extent a lot of people don't want to go to. Um, I we use Stripe for Coding Cat, and there's a ton of stuff we set up um, for. And I know this isn't going to prevent everything, but we actually set our credit card limits to whatever is the required amount. So, mm -hmm. like, let's say we're running Firebase Cloud functions, and I know every month they're going to cost us five dollars. I set that credit card at five bucks. Again, the charge can still happen, so I get that side of it. There's a lot of preventive steps on both DigitalOcean and AWS and GCP and all those spots to shut stuff off. It's a little tricky uh, after dealing with Firebase. I'm a Firebase GDE. I was, so. like, was going to say, you're a GDE. They don't give it to you for free. <laughs> well, I have some things, but um, not not as much as you, you would think, honestly. Yeah. Um, but for those things, like it's very interesting. Like Even like stating that when when one of our functions took off like on fire i had already set up because i knew about it um permissions that if something like that occurs i take all permissions away and everything starts failing across the board mm -hmm. which is not the best for a business but at least i'm not getting a thousand dollar bill at the end of it yeah. so those are two tips i guess like set up credit cards that you can virtually set limits for and then set up kind of some preventive measures but yeah yeah so That's all that point. said, the nice pitch for AppRite is you can let it go bananas. Like you can do so much with AppRite because it's all limited by the infrastructure, not by, we're not charging you per API limits, per auth limits. That instance you own, that's yours. Like let it light on fire. We don't oh, care. Like nice. it's totally great. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, on your third tab, I think you have our docs open still. If you go to the very top, there's installation. Okay. And scroll down, there's a install with Docker. There you go, right there, where it says DigitalOcean. Um, click to install. Oh, yep. yep. I, I was looking right past that. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> where are you talking about? Okay, so we want to create an app right droplet? Yep, exactly. Awesome. That one click, I love one click buttons. <laughs> I do too. Um, so there's a few decisions we're going to make. You'd probably pick New York just to be closer to us. $56 um, a month. So this is, this is, and this is probably fine because of how much credit you have. But um, if you scroll down a little further, so they have some things set up here that are definitely not needed for an app right instance. Um, you will you will run this thing like sweet on what they preset for this. <laughs> yeah. Um, an app right instance typically, so it can run on really small stuff. I wouldn't suggest it quite that small for me. I think for, this is a dark pattern. What they just did. Oh. Because they wanted to upsell you or because something? Because they were trying to upsell me. So they just like selected a higher one and hit <laughs> it. And then you had to hit the carousel to go left to even yeah. find the lowest amount. <laughs> so we are, we are, um, we can run on that. Like we have people that run this on a Raspberry Pi. Don't get me wrong. But I personally, from my experience and kind of having a lot of people hit it and things like that, I typically recommend starting out with um, the $12 a month version 
you don't have to don't get me wrong like if you're just prototyping and messing around and stuff like that four dollars is plenty okay. um i kind of want to see what the that high level did though that's pretty exciting <laughs> um i guess so we let's... have two hundred dollars that expires in two months so i mean we could just get the highest level <laughs> I think I think just uh, for sake of like trying to speed along the install and stuff, let's try it. Like do okay. the do do like at least a two core, like two CPU, like that eighteen dollar version. Let's just okay. at least that. Like I don't think the disc stuff it's gonna make that big of a difference. Uh, is there more stuff below that? Like machine type, maybe if you scroll know. down further. I was thinking there was like a type as well. Maybe it was up higher. I mean, it has this where you can pick the Intel or AMD. Yeah, maybe that's... Is there anything above this anywhere? Like if you scroll up? Basic. Oh, they have dedicated. Okay. That's probably the word I was looking for too was dedicated. <laughs> we don't need that. It, it's totally fine. This is this is great. This okay, is so great. I went to regular $18. Is that the one we decided on? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Even that, like I said, it's probably overkill, but it's great. And then I guess we'll it's do all good. It's all good. password. And we're not going to use that. Thank you, Google. Give me you, a second. You can put this as, well, not as basic as you want. <laughs> I'm going to use my password generator yeah. off screen and then paste it. Okay. And... Yeah, I, I, think, I think that's that's it. Like, you're not going to need... Yeah. Perfect. Well, it doesn't have create droplet yet, so um, I don't. What do I need to do? Don't need tags. Uh, what is it complaining about? And there's nothing. Oh, to right list. there. What's... Oh wait, please store your password securely. We sent an email containing the droplets details or password. That shouldn't matter though either. Um, if you scroll up, is there something else we didn't select? You have the data center already. What what am I missing there? That's the only thing I see. I'm gonna check on that real quick just to make sure. Yeah, I'll try and uh, try on my side too. I don't understand what else we're missing there. I see all the receipts and stuff, but I don't see like. We, you will not be sent an email containing the droplets details or password. Oh, it's just telling me to secure the password. Never mind. I'm. I'm going to uh, log in and see if I can do the same. I, I think I still have. Well, I know I have one through work. So. Okay, so we picked New York. Um, that's right. One droplet. Um, dismiss digitalocean.com. I'm sorry, everyone, that you can't see what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to just make sure I store that password somewhere. Okay. Um, finalize. Yeah, what is it now like? Really don't know. When I click this, it does nothing either. <laughs> Yeah. Your project has been selected as you only have one project. Okay. I do see create up here. Yeah, but that should take you back to the original. The one click should have bypassed that. Um, I'll choose an image basic. Making sure I didn't miss any clicks here. Boy, I think we... uh. We need to tell the digital ocean folks something's going on. Yeah, for sure. Well, let me see if anyone's messaging me on Discord if they're watching. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Um, hmm. So good to use password authentication. You must create a root password to create your droplet. So when I hover over this, oh. it tells me that. Nice. So if I use password authentication, the droplet itself has to have a root password. So how do I do that from this screen? Great question. It would be nice. I actually it always use the SSH key. And so when I hover oh, over that. Should I 
Just use the SSH key. Yeah, you can try it. Ugh, I hate SSH. <laughs> okay, so if I do this, is it going to show some keys that I need to hide? Um, you'll probably be able to do it off screen. So it's usually just copy this, paste that type of stuff. I feel like there's more to this. Like, I don't know what though. I hope this works with like WSL and everything that I have like <laughs> set up on my system. I thought you had uh, made the move over to Mac again. I do for work, yeah. Uh, I use my Windows for all of my streaming stuff, though. Just for sake of the, the stream, um, do you have Docker running locally? I have the Docker um, app, the Docker so it's like a GUI. Yeah, yeah if, if you want, we can run a single command and get that running, too. And I can mm -hmm. show you that. Because I okay, don't so understand what's up here. I'm to do the public key to add. And then I need to copy that, I think, and put it in this. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if maybe there's something up with our one click. I don't think so. I think this was all Docker stuff just based on, uh, or uh, DigitalOcean. I'm going to uh, try just creating a droplet on my own without our one click and see. When I click add SSH key now, it is just like. So I think it might be our one click. I'll have to look into that. I, I vaguely remember someone talking about this at work. So um, when I do a create droplet without it. Um, so let me show you an alternative way to do this real quick. I just went through that and got the SSH key set up, and now it's still not letting me. So I, I think there, there's something wrong, because if I go to create droplet, it does um, work fine. Mm. Which is interesting. I and did. Now, now my one click is working. I, this is so confusing to me. <laughs> We're getting into the weeds with like the. <sighs> so um, try try this again. Go go back in there or go back to our docs and click that one click button again. Just one the second time I tried it, it worked out just fine. OK, yeah, that still didn't work. So go back to the docs, you said. Yeah, just close out your like. DigitalOcean tabs. Close and, all those? Or, yeah, you can leave them open too. It doesn't matter. It's funny because yours is grayed out right away. Yeah. So what it, what I did, what I tried doing, if you go to create um, the drop down and then create droplets. It's the same page. Um, okay, so go out to their main page first, I guess. Uh, is that not their main? Okay, okay, now now try to create droplets. And see, yours is still grayed out. That is interesting. Can I just add a password to, or do you want to share <laughs> your screen? I don't know what to do. So, um, I can push this to GitHub, and you could pull it down and... Okay. Just scroll scroll down a little bit. I just want to double check a few things here. Um, actually, scroll back up a little bit. Sorry. Uh, keep going up. Okay. Go go to yep. Scroll down a little bit. Okay, right there where it says OS Marketplace. Are you able to click on that? Now search for app right. Okay, and keep scrolling down. And then click on, okay, keep scrolling. 
Why is yours? Okay, scroll down further. And then click, just... click your SSH key this time. Ah, so that's not coming through. Yeah, and when I tried to add it, it doesn't, it says okay. it's added and then it doesn't like refresh or anything. It's like. Let's, let's try the password route route one more time. Okay. This, this should be like our, our help video for um, future. <laughs> right. Hey, look at that. You got it. Okay. So while that's spinning up. Oh, I think I just did the $56 one. Just <laughs> <laughs> We'll make sure we kill this before we uh, get okay. off the screen. Um, so while that's spinning up, let's do the local one since you have Docker running locally already. Okay. If you go to the installation tab again for our AppWrite docs, if you scroll up, so this is, I don't know Windows well enough whether or not there's a command and a PowerShell. But one so of those I am on there. WSL though. So I'm hoping that that's Unix and okay. that I can use that's, that. That's the part I didn't know. So try out the Unix command and see what it do does. Do I need to open Docker desktop? You shouldn't need to. Um, okay. What you can do okay. is just open the command line or the okay. whatever terminal thing. I'm just going to use my thing. integrated VS Code because I know it is in. Okay. In, what I would recommend um, running that Docker command, does it matter? It probably doesn't matter, but let's, yeah, let's go there. Okay. Give me just a second. Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure I was in that, still in WSL land. Okay. And paste that command. Yep. I'm in ZSH. Is that, yeah. I'm, I don't have Docker in the WSL2 in the, distro okay. that I, where, I'm where do you have Docker? in windows okay so copy the windows command and go into that um, okay and then i need to do that in the command line or powershell yes One usually when it says this it needs powershell and it needs to be ran as an administrator so i'm gonna do that okay that. So oh windows we oh windows and copy that uh and wait do the PowerShell. Did you switch the tab to the PowerShell command um, on on doc our docs? If you go to our docs. Oh. Oh, there's two. Yeah. Oh, click the, there you go. You got it. Try that. Where did my terminal go? <laughs> there it is. Yep. Error during connect. Docker client must be run with the elevated privileges. This is, I ran it with administrator though. This is administrator. So I think you ran PowerShell with it, but Docker isn't running with it. Oh, so Docker desktop does need to be open or running? Yes, Docker desktop, like Docker, the instance will need to be running somewhere. So how how do I run Docker? So if you, if you just type in Docker right now, does it, does it do anything? Or Docker space PS? So I think Docker is running, but what that error is saying is it's not with elevated permissions. So I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I am not a Windows person, sorry. <laughs> I usually run it as an administrator by like right clicking on the app and- Oh, that should work then, yeah. So the desktop app? Yeah, so if you, if you, I think if you like kill the desktop app, but then run it as administrator- I'm just think... gonna try to open it again, we'll see. And if none of that works, I might have to put on my Docker hat and remember how to do a install from the Docker command or Docker desktop. I'm going to close it and open it again. I have no idea with this stuff. This is why I run on WSL because it is a nightmare. Can't you try. install Docker on WSL? Maybe, probably. It's a Linux. I'm just yep. running Ubuntu under the hood, so. Well, whatever you did, this is working perfectly now. Good, okay. I just restarted PowerShell and it, sometimes with the terminals, if if you install something or start running something, it won't update until you oh. close and restart it, so. So in the meantime, if we check on our um, DigitalOcean droplet, I think it should be good to go or close. Yep. 
There we go. So there's your your new IP address. Um, if you copy that, the 143 blah, blah, blah. Yep. How do I copy that? Uh, where? So see where it says IPv4 140? Yeah. To the left, oh, there's a little, there you go. You got it. I think if you put that in your browser URL. That is an interesting, oh my gosh. <laughs> go to details. <laughs> that was really red. That is really like, please uh, do not go to this site. Detected oh, fishing. Like it won't even let you go, huh? No. Oh no, that bottom link. This visit one? This oh, site. visit this unsafe site. Wow, they really <laughs> changed. She's um, dangerous. <laughs> so this this is your console. I haven't actually run this in a while. I, I'm used to um, it asking for a like first user sign up. So that's kind of funny that we're we're seeing this. This is my first time. Uh, I haven't I haven't run into this. So this I, is my app right instance. Yeah, it is, but. Um, I don't know. I, I guess we could try sign up and see what happens. Sign up, not sign in? Yeah, because this is a brand new, you're not in the cloud or anything. So this is. Oh. Yeah, this is your own instance. Can I use of it. the same information? Yeah, you can totally use everything the same as normal. Okay, I need a new password. So this is, this is just another instance, not, not connected in any way to our back end, if you will. This is your own. I got you. So this is not the cloud. This would be the regular, like, exactly. Facto way. Okay. I was making sure that's not going to send me emails. <laughs> yep. And this is your first project. Okay. So this isn't connected to our to-do app that we did. No. Nope. This wasn't. I thought we were hosting the to-do app. <laughs> we can, though. So you can say, like, to-do part two or, or something out yeah. there. Yeah. And we it's, can... I can show you how easy it is just to flip to the, the new one. So this is how we just install AppRite from your local to the cloud. Like not, not AppRite cloud, but to a hosted version. So this is hosted on DigitalOcean, your complete own instance. And that's, that's what I mean by you can't really overcharge. Once we made those decisions in DigitalOcean where it says we're going to charge you X amount per month. So as far down as $4, you could run um, AppRite and you can hit this thing as hard as you want and you're not going to get billed more money. And cool. that's the big difference between um, all of these other vendor services where they're SaaS provided. Um, they're going to charge you for API calls and bandwidth and things like that because that's how they make money. So. Gotcha. People in the chat were trying to help me with my Windows, like <laughs> not understanding what I was doing. And it said after I start Docker, you should be able to use when uh, Unix in WSL. So I probably could have ran that in WSL, but okay. we, we made it. <laughs> so this is <laughs> now so, hosted. We can kind of start over where we were doing all of the database and collection stuff in the beginning, right? Yeah. So what I wanted to kind of show you here, um, you, you should. I think this will work. We'll see. Um, let's do a test one. Just put test in here because I want to okay. kind of see if it brings up what I'm hoping. It's, been a, it's been a while. Yep. So I think on your first project, what it actually does is creates your first organization as well. So you'll see personal projects is still the organization at the, the yeah. top level. Um, if you click on that, oh, sorry, if you go back, if you click on that drop down by personal projects, that's where you can start to see organizational level items. We didn't really show that off before. Okay. Now, if you go into your test project. Somebody said it's just going to run slower on Windows. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. No, now I'm if I go on my test Here's project. <laughs> uh, click on settings. Uh, bottom left. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I uh, saw an so, S. So here you'll see your API endpoint and everything is set. So Yeah. So this is our... If, if you're like, what the heck? Why am I using a HTTP and not S? And why is it an IP address and all that fun stuff? So those are environment variable configurations that you can make. Um, and there's ways to like, like I, we had one. I'd have to go look. But running at somewhere.codingcat.dev, 
um, you can put that in here to match up with the correct IP address and you put SSL certificates and everything so that it's a, a secure instance. But you kind of have to manage that on your own. Um, once you once you have the domain um, set to the correct thing on DigitalOcean, um, AppRite handles the SSL certificate and all of that piece. But we okay. need like that linkage first um, to do that. It's gotcha. all in our docs if you if you want to go through that. And, and I think it's it. interesting that DigitalOcean doesn't handle that because Netlify and Vercel both like if you host a domain through them, then you get that for free. Yeah, it's it's a little interesting on the droplets. Again, I, th I think it's a DX thing where they're trying to keep it as simple as possible because a lot of droplets that are used never make it to the public web. Yeah. So it's kind of, what are you doing with this thing? Like they could probably ask a few more steps and kind of what they're doing. Vercel and, and Netlify, they're kind of at the point of you're deploying to the web somewhere. That We're is doing very deploy cool. previews and all that stuff. So yeah. they're very niche on, on that side of it. They're not running VMs all over the place. Yeah. Um, so the thing I wanted to show you, which we'll see if this works, um, and with your WSL fun, uh, whatever's happening there, um, let's install the AppRite CLI somewhere on your Windows machine, Command, PowerShell, WSL. Thing. I'm gonna do WSL, okay. okay. Uh, do you have it already? We might have talked about it I don't it before. think so. Just type uh, AppRite, let's see. AppRite. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I do. I thought we installed that some. Oh, okay. Oh, look. Ah, that's so nice. <laughs> okay. So the cool part here, um, let's do AppRite. I think it's space login. I think. Okay. Actually, let, let's just pause because uh, this is backwards. And I've been begging the team to change this. So I don't actually know which instance you're trying to log into, which. I don't like mm -hmm. it, and it's a problem. Um, so hit can, like, can, the cancel out of it a second. Yeah, cancel cancel this one it. one sec, Britt. Okay. Um, and then do app right space client. She's being diligent in reading the comments, I can tell. I was, yeah. <laughs> um, space dash dash reset. So that, that just wiped out anything like connection wise. So we're going to do it fresh from the oh. beginning. So now, now just do up twice and log in. Yep. And so the first place we're going to log into is the cloud version. Okay. So that's that password. Hopefully you remember which one's which. I hope it's in here, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I may, hang on, I may have made a mistake. You can try um, some too. It, like, we'll see. What oh, no, no, no. I, I, um, I mean, just a second. I think I have it still pasted there. I'm hoping that I do. Um, app right, um, I'm going to name this Digital Ocean. I didn't paste my password or save it in my thing for my Digital Ocean droplet for app right. So I wanted to make sure I. Oh. Gotcha. I don't want to update. I want to add. And now I need to find app right. Coffee. Enter the endpoint of your app right server. And that was the one that I have here in the environment variables. This one. Um, yes. Yep. Okay, cool. So I believe if you do app rate space init, it'll give you a list of things. So there's project function collection. What we're going to do is init the project. Okay. Yep. Already associated with oh, I right wondered here. if there was one. That's okay. Maybe we can uh, override. Yeah, let's yes. do yes. Create a new or link this to you. Link. Yep, you got it. I think the bottom one is the one we did. Okay, so what we just did, if you go into your um, directory, file directory there, 
There should be a file called appwrite.json. Am I missing app.json? I think it's appwrite. Uh, were you in your home directory by chance? I was. Should I not have been? Yeah, no. Uh, it it doesn't really matter. So do ls once. I'm, well, if you want. Yeah, okay. So can we move the appwrite? Got JSON if you here. want, or you can just run that same command again. Uh, much probably easier okay. to do this, I think. Sirens, no, siren streams. If I can remember the directories, yeah, siren streams. And then I did, what's the name of this? Siren, siren stream app right to do, it looks like. Siren stream. Oh my gosh. App right. I'm trying to type fast and it's yeah. failing. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So what this did, it was just simply set the project ID and name. The part that um, I, th I think someone had asked us about is kind of some of that schema type stuff. Mm -hmm. So the next command you run is going to be init collection. And I need to be in. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. If you actually just hit the plus on the terminal, it'll drop you directly where we are. I'm sorry, what? So plus. where you create new terminal windows up. Oh, I see, okay. It, I do that all the time because I'm like, I don't want to type this. <laughs> okay, that does make sense. Go. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, app right, init, and then instead of project, we're going to do collection. So so this one always trips me up, and I, I'm curious about feedback on it. So um, you know how we kind of did the flow of you create a, a database, and then you created a collection? I'd love to see us maybe in the future introduce um, in it a database like a whole one so i don't have to go select all the collections but it's oh, here and over there yeah um, somebody said if you double tapped it will show all directories yeah that's true too. double double tap what do you mean double tap on the on the actual um how do i explain this uh <laughs> i'm not even gonna try to because i don't double. know how i'm gonna do that if you double, double tap, tap like right next to that Never right mind. Next we're, not, we're not going to do this. I know it's going to be yeah. too difficult to explain. We're, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So we, we're initting our collection now. So if you hit space bar or A, it'll select all your collections. Okay. And then hit enter. So now if you go and look at that JSON file, this should have all of your attributes with... Um, hmm. We've got the two uh, attributes that we created <laughs> all right so that's okay though. froze i froze Did, am i here i may have froze like you you froze but i think it might have been my internet sorry okay. <laughs> um so actually we forgot our security so let's go turn that on so okay go Talk back back to your yeah. cloud version of app right okay and this is why i said you can do all of this via a schema um, in that JSON file, but it's a little like this is easier in my opinion. So if you go scroll down, um, so let's do update permissions and just set this one to all users read oh, or read. create, you're, you're right, create um, an update okay. and then the doc security, turn that on and update and now run that same command that you just ran, the um, init collection. This one? And to do, and that should update and have all of the correct security. True. Uh, there should be a read. So under permissions, right under updated at, you'll see a create for users. Okay. That's what that looks like. Yep. Okay. So we did all that. We have an instance uh, running off in Docker land, or in DigitalOcean land too. So what you can do is now log in to DigitalOcean and deploy this schema. Okay. And I know I'm usually using the term schema, so I hope it's okay. Log into DigitalOcean. So I need to go back to the DigitalOcean. So what you're gonna do in the terminal, you know how we did that reset um, and then we logged into everything? Yep. Go back over to the AppRate command line and do that again. So- Which one? So app right space client. Yeah, that tab. Okay. <laughs> uh, tab doesn't work here. You oh. have to get 
the arrow. It's really annoying. That that's a, I think that's a ZSA, the oh my ZSH like auto populates it, but you can't complete it with tab. You have to hit the arrow key, which is really like weird. Tab, and Benjamin not. told me, I, I knew this. So double tap meant like tapping tab when you're typing out a file name and it'll cycle through. Oh, the, I, the I don't know what the double tap means. Oh, like tab. If you tab yeah. I thought he meant the double tap on the file directory. Okay. I'm like, I'm not getting into that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, app rights, uh, log in again. And this is going to be, again, I wish it was give me your endpoint first because it would make more sense, but it's going to be your digital ocean login. Wait, the digital ocean app rate login? The, the instance login, yep. So the <laughs> digital ocean app right login. Oh my goodness. I am having to use LastPass way more than I normally do on stream. Okay. Um this is this is gone from a, a svelte episode to a purely app right episode. Right. Uh, I mean this is fine, but like yeah, we didn't really do much felt, but that's it's okay. We talked about stores for a minute. You can you can have me on again. We'll do uh like storage, real time, whatever you want. What we should do is if we ever go back to doing coding cat v2, we should stream that on the siren stuff. That oh, would that'd be cool. cool. Yeah. I, I'm I'm heading towards that route. I know. I'm yeah. There. It's open source folks. So if you want to, right, we have it open. Yeah. yeah. So we do is open. We're trying to move spell, uh, coding cat possibly over to spell kit. So, um, it's, it's anyway. over there already. I, Just how far do we is. take it? Yeah. It's not like completely <laughs> over there though. Oh, let's see. So yes. So that endpoint with the funny IP address is what we're looking for. So, oh, the other one. Yep. Where is that? So that one right there. I'm so happy you left that open. <laughs> I keep losing my mouse because my screens are wonky right now. Oh, I'm yeah. so <laughs> okay, so that did so it. Theoretically, successful. you should be able to operate space deploy. Does it need any parameters or uh, filters? I don't remember. Try that. I think it might need project after it. It needs something after it. Like with the yeah. Netlify CLI, it's I wonder if you're product. behind. Let me let me check real quick because I feel like there's more to this one. And I apologize, I've been drinking like this entire episode. I try to save it for when I'm like not on screen and my throat hurts so bad I just need need liquid. Hmm. Oh, Let's try it. Let's by try the way. It. Oh. They love Apparate stickers that came in the Hacktoberfest package. Yes, awesome. I I also I don't know how I got on the list, but I got those too, and they are they are killer. Um, I have a whole sticker collection. They might be back here. I'm not sure. And I don't know. Do they have something with Holopin too? We just did an episode on Coding Cat Dev yesterday with Holopin, and we're excited to be partnering with them to do some Coding Cat Dev badges mm -hmm. and stuff. Open sourcery. Yeah. This Hacktoberfest poster. Awesome. I that. was so sad this year. I did Hacktoberfest and I completed it, but then I forgot about going back in and having to order my t shirt and stuff. So I didn't get any Hacktoberfest stuff this year. And I it's my oh, first I did get t shirt. Four years. I bet you I haven't worn that. That thing is awesome, by the way. I know. It looks so cool. I was so disappointed. This I was a little bummed. Like the, the back of it, I felt like it should have been the front logo of it. Like, it, I want people to see it. Is that the going. graphic image on the? It's on the yeah, back. Yeah, it's like very yeah. plain on the front, and then it's like, oh, that's killer on the back. Yeah. Um. All right. So I think try to do deploy collections. I guess. I thought you could init a project or uh, deploy a project. Deploy collections in the current project uh, is collection singular. Yes, collection singular. Sorry. That one? See what this does, yeah. Project is not set. So it's telling me I, what I need to do, right? Yeah. I don't know if this makes sense, though. We want to override it because we did the other one? Yeah, I guess so. 
it's kind of makes sense yeah. to me, but it doesn't to you. Maybe. We set it up to the cloud version and we're switching it to the digital yeah. ocean version. So I would think we would need to override all those settings, right? Totally correct. I was just hoping like we could leave most of it and it would create the same project ID and all of that stuff. So, oh, I got you. Okay. So yeah, I might have to think through that a little more, but um, yeah. Now, can we do that? I'd be shocked if it's not going to need a database, but yeah, try it. Yeah, cool. I guess just the project Deploy association would good. So if you, the browser window you have there, if you click on databases, you should see everything done. Sweet. I'm surprised the name didn't come through. It's, yeah, it did the ID, but. Okay. If you click <laughs> on that, what's what's in there? The oh, we didn't set up the database through yeah, the CLI. But, uh, go go to the JSON file. I thought the name was should be in there. This might be oh, a little bug we found. That's this one, right? Yeah. Database ID is all it has, and so it pulled this. Oh. I bet. I'll have to uh, write that one down. We didn't use the CLI to actually connect to. Yeah, there's something off there. I'm, I'm taking a note on that one, but I like okay. that we, we ran through this. Yeah, we're going way over today, but it's yeah. totally fine. I'm learning a lot. So, um, so yeah, that is exactly how you would, you know, create another instance from not a bug, a feature. Yes, <laughs> no, it's definitely a bug. <laughs> um, so, so that's how you would, um, like go from one instance to another and then um there there are ways to completely back up your database and, and move data to um like we wouldn't have to do that through the cli but um as someone that's like doesn't do infrastructure day in day out you might find it useful to go down this road and then just write um a script like a node.js or whatever your favorite language is to connect to both so i would then take like go read all my data out of this database and push it to that database type of thing as, as someone who doesn't want to deal with infrastructure. If you're good with databases and stuff, we have a lot of easy commands that go through like the SQL side of that and we'll do it all on that side too. So it just depends on how you want to handle it. So right now, um, I think the Git remote is set to that repo that we cloned, right? Yes. I, I want to do that, and I want to do dh repo create to get this up. Um, you know what I always do now, what? just for me. Like I, I usually leave the the origin now and use GitHub's. I do gh uh, repo fork, and boom. Oh, awesome. I didn't. I don't know the commands to do that from their command line. Yeah, it's Still. like I find that so useful now. Oh, interesting. So I already did it. So I'll go ahead and create a new repository. And we'll what did that it. say below that? Did it give you an option right there? Oh, crap. Um, what do you mean below what? Do, do that again. The GH repo create. What did it ask you? To create or push, oh, push. existing. Um, I See, I would push. A, there's something you can do here that will allow you to do it to an organization. Do you know what that is? It's like, I always do it wrong. I, it's the, the organization name slash. Um, but every time I try it, I do it wrong. So I, I have to look this up because I'm going to I think you have to do like dash dash public, I believe. Okay. Like so that. GitHub CLI org organization create repo. Maybe that'll give me what I want. Adding locally hosted code to GitHub, get repo create. This might be create name and flag so yeah dash dash public is right that's right i think you just do like if yours is um svelte sirens is that right yeah and i don't know if it's i'm seeing my nice hyphenated or not so it is hyphenated so okay so we would do github repo create and then do space does it have to be capitalized i don't think it matters but okay. yep and then slash and then dash dash oh, wait go back do slash whatever your repo name is going to be okay so uh if you want it the same it's siren stream app right to do yeah uh stream app right to do i'm gonna leave the siren off because we're in the silt sirens stream app right to do okay 
and then dash dash public. Yep. Oh, I love that. <laughs> now let's see if I put it in the right place. <laughs> okay, now let's refresh. I think so, Ooh. though. Yes. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. CLIs are like the best thing ever, <laughs> especially when they work. So now I'll get commit. Um, um, so app right with spelt. And I need to do that. What? Oh. Did you ever uh, get, did your Docker finish um, locally or no? Docker finish locally in the PowerShell? Yes, no. Cool. Yeah. So if, it you did? Hit, if I think if you just hit enter through all of the next prompts, you should be good. Yep. Just keep Jesus, it. Enter. Secret API key. Just keep going. This oh, is all you know. local. It doesn't matter. Just keep going. Enter, 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 enter. Okay. It does. <laughs> that scares me sometimes when I do that too fast. It's going to run for a little bit. So, okay. Docker Compose is kind of spinning everything up. So the cool part, uh, mm -hmm. small lesson on, on Docker, if you open up your Docker desktop now, you can see how many, and this is my terminology, uh, it's not instances, I, I don't know, something along those lines, but there's a bunch of, so there's a, a app right image that is gonna be running with a um, lot of containers underneath. That's why I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, when this composed, oh, yeah, my computer is firing up. <laughs> so I don't know what that that one is because oh, that might, that might be something else because yeah, that is the one that you're firing up right now. Okay, interesting. So you'll see all of the different stuff. Our databases, um, Redis is a caching layer. MariaDB is the database traffic, okay. um, like all of those things. Those are all parts and pieces of what makes up AppRite. And so if you're interested in open source, like dive into our repo, you can be part of any of this. We're always expanding all of our SDKs. Um, we're always, which stresses me out. Can you tell? Like there's so much stuff going on all the time. Um, so I mean, they provide a lot of things. There's a ton of stuff. And if you love PHP, that's a huge plus because most of this stuff is written in PHP. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so cool. So now you have an instance there too. So if you hit localhost, no port, that's where your app right will be running. Here? Uh, if it finished, yeah. If it, so in your browser, go to localhost. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> and no port. No port. Okay, cool. And so same thing again, you'd sign up and you'd be in and... So it would be a separate user than the one we used that was from DigitalOcean. Right. So this is okay. a brand new instance. The problem I was running to here is I am logged in to the GitHub CLI with my personal. I am not logged into the organization, and now I don't know how to do that. <laughs> and so I couldn't push to the repo. I. Oh, okay. I was thinking there's a way to do that too, but that makes sense. And I don't know. Because when you log into GitHub, you're always you. In GitHub. Yeah. But um, I don't know what the. I do the know this, but I always forked my personal, I, th I think, for the most part. There is a way to do that. I can't remember what it is. Logging in. There's no search on their CLI docs. GitHub CLI login. And go out um, and check. I believe we have one other Svelte repo people might want to check out. Yeah, awesome. Link that and I'll share it. You should link, uh, send me the link for the Coding Cat V2 also, and I'll link that out. Um, so there may this, be something this one needs so a lot of love. Very soon that uh, people will be very interested in looking at these open source projects for. Been doing a terrible job. I forgot I can read comments as a guest. I'm never a guest on streamer. It's throwing me off. It is a very weird experience, and I think I'm getting used to it because, well, actually, no, I'm always, almost always, I am an owner, so I have like yeah. the same view. But when you go in as a guest, it is very different. Yeah, it's it's definitely a simpler, you know that. So that's 
that's a repo that needs lots of love and attention still. Um, our, our React demos and things um, are further along. What I want to do across all of ours, I own all of our, or my team owns all of our demo repos now. And I want to get them all so that we're using our new pink design framework and kind of get everything lined up correctly across everything. So it's a work in progress and all of our examples are, are coming too. So um, I'm curious when you, when you do like Svelte or like probably not Svelte kit, but like Svelte, um, do you always use like Astro for, or not Astro? Do you use um, words, Alex? Uh <laughs> What's Evan's new tool? Vite. Do you use Vite? When you um, do, uh, so now that SvelteKit is in 1.0, it is the recommended way to create any kind of Svelte app. So even oh, like if you're okay. running the client side rendered version, they recommend you use, and it's whatever tool you're using. So Yarn, NPM, PMPM, Create, Svelte. Nice. Cool. I don't know if that works with Yarn actually, but it does with NPM and PMPM. Yeah. I think on our V2, oh, which uh, let me go chase down. I forgot you asked me for it. Um, we are using PMPM spaces with turbo. I, uh, I am playing a little bit with PMPM workspaces for a new mono repo at work also. And I'm, I'm loving it so far. Copy. And here is our coding cap version two repo that is in Svelte kit and open to pull request. We're looking at like image components and trying to see what we can do with that um, because there isn't a Svelte image mm -hmm. component yet. And what's the other thing we're struggling with? Is ISR. Uh, ISR. Yeah. yeah. Incremental oh. static generation and however still has that built into Next.js is missing a little bit in Svelte kit. So currently, and and I'd love to do a, a whole like just Q and A session on this. Um, but currently, the way we have it set up, there's a Firebase function that is a webhook. So anytime a GitHub PR goes through that's approved, it looks at the content directory that we have, and there's Markdown uh, MDX. No, it's, what are those called? Specs. The what's MD the specs? Oh, MD specs. I can yeah. never remember that. Um, so those uh, are out there. And what we do is take that from the GitHub repo and we actually put those into Firestore. And then we can dynamically update our site whenever we want, either based on that PR. Um, I don't know if that's the right or wrong way. I'd love to hear from people, but um, for all of our public courses, it makes sense probably just to build out statically, but there's some private things in there too. So uh, I don't know. I think I'm missing something with how Vercel is handling the ISR and Next.js. Wait, ISR is available for Vercel adapter with the new route level config. There was a bug though, but I think Rich, I, I knew there was a discussion around it. I didn't yeah. know this was done. I saw the discussion. I didn't know it was done. Yet. Oh, kit, ISR. Let's see if I can find the discussion. I cannot. Add incremental static regeneration is an open issue. Incremental builds support for static adapter. I'll open both of these and show them on screen in just a second. So this is. Thanks, Antonio. This is so. Cool. Incremental build support for static adapter. That's one of the ones. And then this one is the other one. So this is the open issue for ISR. Uh, and this is the merged and finished issue for static adapter. So this would be if your site is static, you could incrementally build. What's, why well, I don't get that. So, I think Gatsby was working on this. When you have many, many, many pages, you don't want to rebuild every page mm -hmm. every time you run a build. So is this just incrementally building new pages? Like instead of building every page, it would build only things that have changed? There's a kit issue, two, three, see up here on there. What's 4661? What? It says 4661. Oh, scroll down, scroll down that issue for Rich's comment. 
in this issue in here. Yeah. yeah, okay. Rich's comment. Cash and validation is always going to be platform specific. We vaguely talked about adapters being able to do cash and validation. Yeah, I think I read through all of this. Mm, yeah. This is from like 2021. So this is yeah, like, I a read new, through, is I, I there read a new through issue? I read through all of this. Um, is there a new clear. comment somewhere the, in here? The piece of ISR that we're missing is I, I don't really care to rebuild the site every time a PR is put in. Um, just on like when new this pages. This is what they're talking about, route level config. This got merged. Hmm. I would have to read through this, but here is that pull request. Um, yeah, cool. I forgot your Svelte Society. I'm like, who is that? <laughs> yeah, um, logged in under Svelte Society because it goes to the YouTube channel. Um, the docs are here, but we could probably do a better job of describing on-demand ISR, but if you specify a bypass token. So oh, it cool. does look like it's available. So I will share that as well. Oh, this is a um, deploy preview URL, it looks like. Yeah, that bypass token is, is kind of the big part, at least for what we do now. Um, so does that mean previews should be available as well? Probably. Hmm. So currently, I guess, the way, the way that Code and Cat works today is um, we have a Notion, we have a bunch of Notion databases synced up. And um, when we're writing a blog or, or working on our podcast or anything like that, um, we have a URL that we can hit with a key, and that key shows us preview pages. So mm -hmm. before oh, we write yeah. a release, we, we have that side of it. So that's one piece. And then, like, we haven't rebuilt our site forever because I can do a revalidate command on our pages. So if there's like a spelling error or something, let's say, um, we can just click revalidate and only that page updates. We don't have to rebuild the entire site. So that preview page. And this is all Next.js, by the way. Would um, you not get that like with a deploy preview, but you don't want to build like the entire deploy preview? Is that what you're trying to avoid? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it, we can. I mean, it's it's hitting a lot of like cheese. Is that is that the right one? It's, like, it's it's wherever you want to put the the onus on like the actual work. Like, do we put it in our build step? Is that where it goes? But then like previews, you have to work around. There's it's just where you want things. That's like if you're kind of in the um, uh, remix arena, let's say. Like they're all fully for the most part SSR based mm -hmm. because they believe strongly in kind of what they're doing on the edge. Not for the most part, it is only SSR. You can't. Well, there's some things in there, but yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll pretend that's true. Um, from the from that side of the house, though, they 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 kind of say like, yeah, our cache validation and, and things like that will handle the majority of it. And that's well and good, but all across the world, that cache validation can be a little tricky and your APIs get hit harder mm -hmm. okay. um so it's on a true cdn that's globally available around the edge and you've built and everything's out there it, i don't think you can beat it honestly like static builds like that and i i think rich has has mentioned isr is pretty amazing um i think the more he dug into it too so i yeah. don't know I, i'm i'm torn on on which side to go but again is that's like the S and r implementation using the edge platform Ours is not. Okay. So it's it's so down to their regular uh, their CDN sorry. static level. Yeah. Yep. So everything is ISR out there. Most of our pages currently, which I, I keep meaning to bump this out further, but they're an hour oh. and they should probably be a lot longer. Antonio, yeah, I think we have links disabled for anyone that's not a moderator. If you have my Discord handle, I'm just Brittany Post my Discord. If you want to message me, that would totally be fine or anything I can Oh. See to here. Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry. But I think we talked about everything with the app, right? Right? Did we're we only miss like anything? forty minutes over? We're, we're doing. I know. I know. Yeah, I should probably get to work at some point today. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm gonna go have some lunch. So I, I hope you at least got an understanding of the basics. I would say of connecting to AppRite and how to use it within Svelte. There's so much more you can do, um, just with the uh, subscriptions and, and like cloud functions and stuff like that. So uh, I'll definitely come back on as long as Brittany will have me, and uh, we'll show off some more Svelte items that you can do um, with AppRite. All right, sounds good. Cool. I will get that code pushed up at some point today too. I got to figure out that org level thing, but that will be up and available for everyone on this belt sirens. Let me link that before we go. Um, here is where it will be eventually. Thanks, Antonio. Appreciate that. All right. Thank, thanks everyone. We'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. Thanks.